Hello viewers, welcome back to the lab. Um, now I have a bit more space uh, because the HAL has been put away into storage. Um, we are going to be building a little electronics project today um, because we need to look at some devices on this board here. So this particular card is from my Quantel DPB7000. We have been going through um, pretty much all of the cards, well, I've, I have been through all of the cards and I've been taking images of all of the programmed devices. Um, now, for the most part, these are all um, simple PAL 16 programmable logic devices. So I've been going through that and, and making truth tables on how they actually work. The reason why we've been doing that is because we have been working on the Quantel DPB emulator. Um, this has been done by um, the Mog Miner, and there's been a fair bit of activity recently on um, and progress. We have now got to the point where we're down to um, this particular card, um, and it's a bit of a stumbling block because it has um, some combinational PALs, but it is the only card in the whole machine that has a registered PAL, this one just here. My normal technique for reading out uh, these was to uh, read them in um, a little contraption that I built um, to use with my TL866 um, programming tool. Uh, now this is actually my collection of uh, little adapter boards that I've made over the years to uh, read out the um, both combinational PALs um, and also very, very small PROMs. Um, Quantel used these quite a lot in the DPB, especially the PROMs. So you might just get a tiny, tiny little memory um, device, which is maybe 256 bytes, um, something like that. Um, and they can just be read out as memory, but you often need to make a little adapter to convert the pins to something that the TL-866 can actually read. Um, and that's what all these adapter boards do. Uh, so this one converts the 28L22 PROM to an AM2716, very common EEPROM. So you can just read that device out, um, even though it's much, much smaller than the 2716. Um, once you've downloaded it, all it does, once it's reached the end of the actual memory, it just loops around. So you just have to um, delete the extra um, duplication at the end and you're left with your little 256 byte um, image of the PROM. So yeah, I've got stuff here like uh, 27S19. Um, we've got one for the GAL 20V8. Um, so that's a, a GAL a PAL that's been converted to a 2764. Um, 27S291, that's getting converted to a 2716B. That was quite a common one that I used. So this is what I did um, originally, uh, but then I later realized that it was quite a big chore to uh, make these little adapter boards. Um, these actually just plug in. They have um, pins on the bottom, so you can just pop that into, pop that into there and then you can just read it. Um, I, I realized that it was quite a bit of a chore to, uh, to do all this, so I actually built this one, um, which allows me just to jump the pins where I want them. Um, so, you see there, the pins that come down which sit into the socket. So these were a, a great tool to use um, to download uh, things like small PROMs and the smaller combinational types of PAL like the 16V8 and the 20V8, that kind of thing. Um, you can just build up a truth table of uh, what the um, PAL does, and you can use that truth table in your emulator. Now, this becomes a lot harder when you have the PALs that are called registered PALs. Um, they have exactly the same um, combinational inputs but they often have um, a clock or some other mechanism to change um, registers that are on some or all of the output pins. What that means is if you have um, 
all of the combinational inputs that stay in the same state um, using the clock or the other pin that changes the registers allows you to change the output um, and of course that makes it so much harder when you're trying to figure out the exact programming of these devices so you can then go on and emulate it. So uh, this technique of uh, just using a TL866, it doesn't really work, it, it just becomes the number of combinations that you need to go through just becomes insane and um, it's just not an effective way to try and work out how these actually work or have been programmed. So we need to try and get some kind of truth table for this um, PAL 16R4 device here. So what we have is this board here. This is an open source project called DuPAL. Um, it is a a project which is designed um, to allow you to do reverse engineering of um, PALs and GAL devices, uh, particularly the ones that are registered um, because they're the most uh, problematic. So the designs for this board were actually downloaded from the uh, DuPAL GitHub and I sent these straight off to PCBWay. And um, about a week later they all arrived and they're absolutely perfect. So. Um, I can't thank PCB Way enough for uh, manufacturing these for us and also sponsoring the channel. This episode of Dexter's Tech Lab has been sponsored by PCB Way, your one stop solution for PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, and this is not just normal PCBs, you can do flex, flex rigid, all this sort of stuff. They also offer 3D printing, CNC machining and milling, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding. So tons and tons of options there for turning your current project into reality. So what we are going to do in this video is uh, assemble this together. I think I've got all the components I need. Um, I only had to go out and buy a few, a few things. Most of it I've managed to rummage and find in the lab elsewhere. So, um, and I think I have enough to build two boards. So uh, this should be relatively easy. It's all um, through hole um, parts. So it's just a case of um, matching the uh, components up to that where they go on the board and doing some soldering, which is quite nice to do because I've not done any in quite a while. Excellent, so that's all the soldering done. Um, so yeah, next thing I need to do is pop the chips in and we're gonna need to program the microcontroller um, and then we can see what happens. Right, so uh, let's get the um, ICs installed. Um, I've got my lovely, lovely vintage um, IC lead setting tool. Um, so I believe this actually originated from Quantel. Um, bit of a long story how I came across, came, came across it, but uh, for another day maybe. So what's, uh, what's nice about this is when you go to put these in, the, the leads are always too far apart. So you use one of these tools, you pop it in there and you go like that and it straightens all the legs up. So to get this programmed with the Dupal firmware, we had to program the Atmel um, microcontroller. Now, this is actually made up of two parts. There is a bootloader, uh, which you can program in using a TL866. Once that is done, um, the actual Dupal firmware is sent over the serial port. So uh, it's a bit of a two-step process. You have to program the Atmel with the bootloader, and then you can just do all the rest over RS-232, which makes things a little bit easier. Okay, I'll show you a little bit of the software side of this. Um, I'm assuming here that the Dupal um, has all been programmed with its firmware and it's all ready to go. Um, so that is then uh, plugged to your PC with a serial cable, 
and the devices in the, um, the socket ready to be analysed. So um, the next step of the process is to run the Dupal analyzer. Now the Dupal is it's like a whole suite of different uh, applications um, and the first step is the analyzer and what that does it drives the Dupal card um, to actually go through all of the combinations um, including the registers and all that sort of stuff and it records it into a file which you then um, go on to analyze further to work out how the actual device has been programmed. So um, it's a bit of a complicated process. I can show you a little bit of, of it here, uh, but I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail. Um, so the Dupal analyzer is written in Java, so you'll need Java installing, and um, there's just a, a short command line to, uh, to actually fire it off. Um, so if we have a look at some of the batch files that I've actually generated here um, to actually um, dump some of these um, these devices. So you can see there that it's uh, Java Dupal Analyzer. Um, it's COM1 because we're using COM1 to communicate with the Dupal. Uh, we've told it the device 16R4 um, and then there's an output file. This number on the end um, is what tells the uh, analyzer which pins are um, output pins. Um, if you don't put that on it will actually work out what those um, output pins are um, and then report back saying okay please run it again and just add E1 or 37 or whatever, whatever number it is to tell the analyzer which are output pins. So once that is done it will uh, it doesn't report much to the screen it literally goes away and it generates um, some rather large files. Uh, so we'll look at this one here. Um, so yeah, uh, that's about 1.2 meg. So this is all the um, input states and output states. Um, so yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> so uh, yes, this is all the data which um, later gets analyzed uh, and somebody more clever than me will work out um, how the device has been programmed. Okay, that concludes this video. Thank you very, very much for watching. Um, I hope it's been interesting for you. And hopefully in the future, we'll have a little bit more detail on the Quantel DPB 7001 um, paint box emulator. Thanks again to my patrons for all their support and PCB Wave, obviously, for um, supplying the PCBs for me. Thank you very much. You're all awesome. And I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.